We will be watching, as you know. Real quick, you guys have to hear what Boogie Cousins said. He compared Kawhi Leonard to, well, take a listen. He's, he's, he's really good. Are you pleased with some of the defense was on him? Was he just making some tough He shots? hit. I mean, he was hitting shots over two guys. I mean, I, I heard he was working with Kobe, and um, it was some flashes of Kobe. <laughs> Comparing him to Kobe Bryant. Byron Scott, how do you feel about that? Well, first of all, if you're going to compare him to somebody and you think the kid is playing great basketball and Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard right now is going to be an MVP candidate this year. I mean, the kid is yeah, that good. Clearly. But that is the best compliment you can get from one of your peers is to be compared to KB. You know, so obviously the kid is playing great basketball. Uh, his future, every, every year he's gotten better and better. He's taken a much more significant role in the offense the last couple of years. This year, uh, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know, for this guy. And they might have the best front line in basketball in San Antonio right now. He iced the Kings last night with shots that looked like Kobe shots. You know, when you need a bucket and nothing else works, like someone's got to get a bucket. Can we talk for a second, though, about how now Kawhi has just reached the point where he just takes the ball from people. I know. They're not even dribbling yeah. it. He just goes <laughs> and takes well, if you it. Had He's those like a, hands, you oh. just... I've never seen that before. It's Poor difficult. Ben McLemore was almost reduced to tears on the court last night. <laughs> I'm not sure it was that bad. It should have been. I would have been. I will say, though, that was a fun game to watch, right? And the Blazers game was a really fun game to watch. And all of the hand-wringing and the, oh, my God, this whole season, it's predetermined, and the Cavs and the Warriors, and mm. isn't it going to be boring because we all think we know what's going to happen in the finals. Basketball is fun, and there's all these subplots all over the league every day. I, just, I was sitting there flipping around last night thinking, it's gonna, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good year. It's gonna be a good year because again, you can't you, you know I mean if you play it on paper, you give it to Golden State. Yeah, but, but the game is played on the court. And there's it's fun to watch it. It is fun on. to even watch. Even if what happens at the end, even if it happens exactly as right. we say it's gonna happen, it's gonna be fun getting there. All right, we're gonna go to break with this distant replay from Carmelo back in 2009. No triangle here. Anthony for 30. Now Millsap. Oh, bad, bad. Slay pass. pass. No! Oh, wow! Now that was spectacular. So, DeAndre, Mason Plumley, come on. Clippers' first game of the season. You need to chill a little bit here, guys, right? Oh, I like it. Let's go. This is a sneaky, testy rivalry. I like it. I love it. I love it. Neither one of them want to fight, though. So, you know, what the heck? <laughs> oh! You call them fake fighters? Soft. I'm just saying. Soft. Neither one really wanted to fight. Ow. Come on. I'm just saying. It's a Friday, and, man, the takes are already here. We have three-time NBA champ Byron Scott back, and, of course, Esteemed Zach Lowe. Zero Thrilled time to have NBA you here. Zero. Yeah, I didn't want to bring it up, but you know, I'm glad you just copped to it yeah. right there. Guys, let's be honest. There was a lot of hand wringing about the Chicago Bulls this summer, right? The roster, it sort of felt like when you go to the grocery store, you know, when you're hungry and you just sort of randomly start taking things off the shelf, like, ooh, ooh a Rajon Rondo, that looks good. And a Dwayne Wade, yeah, let's get that. All of a sudden, you end up with a shopping cart full of players who can't space the floor and can't shoot long distance. <laughs> or so we thought. Last night, Wade was four of six from three, including the 25-foot step back that proved a dagger in a win over the Celtics. This is a man who only made seven threes all of last season. But let me put it another way. Of the players who've attempted more than a thousand threes in their career, so, you know, basically veterans, Wade is one of the three worst at it in history. You know it's not good when you are on a list with this, with Charles Barkley. Come on. Now, wonder his wife, Gabrielle Union, tweeted this during the game. Who is this guy is right. <laughs> all right but here's the thing about Wade. Of all the skills the 12-time All-Star has, his most valuable might just be his adaptability. You remember how Wade played to win his first ring, barreling to the basket like a tornado. The slogan that Converse dreamed up for him was fall down seven times, stand up eight, right? But then as he aged, he adapted his style, developing his shot a la Michael Jordan there. And then when LeBron James came to Miami, it was Wade who adapted yet again. And now he's trying to adapt one more time. This summer, he asked Fred Hoiberg to be his shooting coach and spent weeks learning Hoiberg's footwork. Most players aren't looking to try new things as they approach 35 years old. But you only needed to see Wade come down the hallway after last night's game to know how much this all means to him. That's the way you do it. That's the homecoming right there. I like that one. 
Now, to me, that doesn't look like a man who is sour about a role in Chicago that has him often deferring to Jimmy Butler. That looks like a man who knows how to adapt. And so the question I want to ask you guys really is, first of all, do you buy that Dwayne Wade is now going to be a three-point shooter? And in general, I mean, can the Bulls do better than they are poised to on paper? Well, you know what, Rachel, it's like throwing a, a lot of food in the pot. It's like gumbo. You know, you throw all these different <laughs> things in the pot, all of a sudden it comes out and it you tastes pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It while. tastes pretty good. <laughs> Dwayne Wade might not hit another three all season long. I mean, he hit four last night. But he the of one little thing, faith, Byron Scott. I, I love Dwayne. You know I love D Wade. <laughs> but I think he understands who he is as a basketball player. His adaptability is something that he can do on a night to night basis. He's one of those guys that, you know, take it from Kobe, who learned that, you know, early in his career he was able to get to the basket, do whatever he wants. Now as you slow down, you have to get that mid range game and you have to get that long range game mm, as well. Oh, that's something that oh, he's able to do. Oh, Look oh, that's this. me back in the day, you know. That, I mean, you can do that I like now, Dwayne. Right? You know, I wish I could. Yeah, on a seven-foot court, I could do that. <laughs> you know, where he was jumping all over the place. And then as I got older, <laughs> it was more of these, you oh, know, jump see, there shots. We go. By the way, you I know, noticed you're shooting. One or two yeah. dribbles. Oh, look at that basket. It's you know, going over Michael Jordan's yeah, head. Yeah, you know, little with Scotty and Michael out there. You know, so you <laughs> so learn to adapt as you get older <laughs> and as you get, you know, that experience yes. as well. Absolutely. Look, they're, they'll be fine. They're a nice NBA team. They're winning in, like, the low you, 40s. I've heard, okay. you, I've heard you. <laughs> that's so all that's right. playoffs. That's playoffs, that's, though. That's there, there, there you go. That's for the playoffs. playoffs. Like, look, they're very smart. They can pass and cut better than almost any other team in the league. They'll, like, figure stuff out. And I will say this. People are going to leave them so open that their threes are going to be, like, a, easier than a lot of other teams' threes until if they start making them, that'll change. So they'll, they'll figure some stuff out. But man, that spacing is awful, and there are going to be nights where it just doesn't work. I mean, it never looked good during preseason. It didn't look good last night. When you saw them put this roster together, and we know how it all happened, they certainly did not expect Wade to be available. What did you think, though, in terms of someone who does think about roster makeup as much as you do? I, I thought, I'm not sure they have any plan in place or what the long-term vision of the franchise. I mean, they hired Fred Hoiberg, and they said, oh, his, his pace and space offense is the missing ingredients to take us where Tibbs couldn't take us. And then they've they signed nothing but guys who can't shoot. I mean, it's like, <laughs> why'd you hire Fred Oiberg? I don't know. <laughs> so there you go. But you wouldn't mind getting those three players on your on your. Oh, bench of course not. Coach, right? I, all those guys are, you know, they, they have a wealth of experience like you talked about. And like you said, if they keep getting those shots and they improve their jump shots, then they're going to be hard to beat. You know, but, you know, we're, we're looking at one game sample yeah. right against now. Against the team on you know, the second against, end of a back to back. Right. It's right. a one game sample. So let's look at this, you know, during all-star break and let's see where they are. Because I do agree with you that that spacing is still going to be, you know, a little suspect. And you got guys who are sh not shooters going to have to shoot it. Dwayne Wade might not hit another three again. Well, I'm just saying. Season. He might end up wow. eight or nine this year instead of the seven. You were in midseason form, too. <laughs> the second game of that doubleheader was a great game, right? It was a little chippy, Clippers, Blazers. And afterward, take a listen to what Chris Paul told TNT's David Aldridge. You know, we know we are not one of the you know, most liked teams in the league, and we talked about embracing it. Seriously, like, forget everything else. Let's go out there every night, back to back a night. Let's play and compete. It is what it is. That's pretty strong there. Embrace the hate, right? I mean, mm. if the Clips do want to go that route, it's mm. a good squad oh. to live up to, right? Love mm. the bad boys. Not bad. And then, uh, you know, the bare knuckle Knicks of the 90s. They got into a bit. You didn't want to run into them in a dark alley there. Well, maybe Jordan did. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Now that's, that's basketball back in the day. No, Jeff, no, <laughs> don't do it. It's like a time machine. You can't make them stop. And we remember Miami initially tried to embrace the hate when they became the Heatles. Remember, LeBron was, I'm okay to wear the black hat. All that stuff. Do you guys think this is a good strategy for the Clippers? Didn't our friend Howard Beck write that they have Everyone all Everyone hates the Clippers. And why everybody hates the Clippers. I mean, should they just embrace it? Yeah, whatever floats their boat. I don't really care. <laughs> like whatever, whatever, whatever does it for them. I'm gonna find something you care about. No, I'm, you know what I care about? Who's the fifth guy on the floor in crunch time with Reddick, DJ, Blake, and CP? That's what I care about. That's gonna decide whether they can beat, actually get to the conference finals for the first time in franchise history. That's what I care about. Does it elevate a team though to, to give them a little extra? Push first of all, that, that, that fifth guy is Crawford. But let's oh, just throw him out there. Okay, let's throw him. But, yeah, I think it does. I think, you know, what Chris Paul is doing, he's taking a page out of Kobe Bryant's book, who used to always come in and talk about he loved being the villain. And I think right now this team feels that everybody does hate him. And one of the reasons is because they complain all the damn time. But we, 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 we won't get into that. You know, the referees hate him, everybody. But I think they're taking this to a level where, hey, this is something that can motivate us to get to that 
Western Conference Finals, which is something they've never been able to do. Do you, do you think the refs are, are kind of fed up with I them? think the – absolutely. Well, there's no question. Yeah, I think the refs <laughs> get tired of guys complaining time and time again. And, you know, just like anything else, you keep complaining, the referees all of a sudden, they start shutting you out too. Can they defend Kawhi and Clay and KD with Jamal and J.J. on the wing? Is that going to fly? <clears throat> probably not, but I, I think they'll probably look at it like we, we feel we can at least score with you. You know, and, and that puts pressure on the other team as well to try to defend them. But, you know, San Antonio after two games looks really Ooh. good. They, they, they're not as usual. any hate, so. Because <laughs> everybody be always forgets it. about them. They don't think about I don't them. know if anyone's forgetting about Kawhi with the numbers he's <laughs> put up in the first two games, oh. right? I, I don't think he can go low-key this season no. with those kinds of performances. No. He looks good. All right, before we go to break, I do want to update a story that we spoke about on this show yesterday. The Sixers pulling R&B singer Seven Streeter from singing the national anthem because she was wearing a shirt that said, We Matter. Enough Sixers players were upset about the team's decision. They had a meeting with management, and they weren't the only ones who spoke out. Here's a tweet from the Heat's Justice Winslow saying, We Matter, and posing with a raised fist with the Sixers' Jeremy Grant. And today, the Sixers released this statement, quote, we are sorry that this happened after receiving feedback from our players, basketball operations staff, and ownership group. We believe that the wrong decision was made and Seven should have been welcome to sing. We apologize to her and in an effort to move the conversation forward, we have reached out to offer her an opportunity to return and perform at a game of her choice. We are waiting to hear back. Now, those of you who watched the show yesterday know how I feel on this issue. A black woman simply stating that she matters, that she is as human and as worthy of recognition and rights as anyone else in this country, that is not something that should be up for debate or that there should be political sides on. That's not anti-American or protest against the military. And the people who want to turn it into one are not the people you want to pander to as an organization. So I really appreciate what the Sixers did here. When their players and front office staff had an issue, they listened. We don't see that all the time. And then the Sixers publicly acknowledged that they were wrong. They said they were changing their minds, and they apologized, an apology that actually sounded sincere. That is not how public discourse usually works these days. All the more reason why it's refreshing. All right, we'll be back with more of The Jump right after this. Double double in his Hawks debut last night, and after the game, his head coach, Bud, went full PFT commenter there. He said, White has established himself as an elite player. Byron, he's talking about a guy who hasn't made an all-star team in two years. Do you buy that he is in the elite of the NBA still? No, I, I do not. But I, I will say this, he can be an elite player again if, D not, if Dwight Howard would do the little things. Yeah. Defend, rebound, block shots. You know, if, if he does those things, he's one of the elite big men in this game. When he gets himself in, prob in trouble is when he all of a sudden wants the ball on the offensive end. You know, he wants to be that post-up player. That's not his forte. So do what you do. And if he does what he does, he's going to be tough this year. What were the conversations you had with him when I assume you said you need to do these little things? No, I, I never had a conversation with him. <laughs> whatever one, I wasn't coaching him. Then, oh, so. I'm sorry. Whatever, <laughs> whatever, one, in my head. whatever one tier below elite is, that's where he is. He's yes, still really sorry. good. And I, think, <laughs> and I think he... Um, I think he fit really well with the Hawks last night. He did exactly he did. what they needed. He looked good. They only posted him up when, they're, when their bench guys were in and they needed some offense. I think it worked well. I mean, he is the reason why I'm flashing back to the Lakers. But I was going through my head is there are two. He was playing with two different players in Kobe and James Harden who have made it clear that they did not like playing. Right. 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 He is now right. playing on a team with players who have at least said publicly that they do like playing with him. That has to make him feel better, right? And the way that he wants to produce for them. Absolutely. I think it makes him feel much more part of the team. And like you said, we know in Houston last year, you know, he, he made a statement about these guys hang out together. They, they, they're friends off the court. We know good and well him and James Harden didn't yeah. hang out together. I'm pretty sure in a locker room after the game, he probably said, which way are you going? Because I'm going the opposite. <laughs> Can you tell <laughs> Don't want to be around. Yeah, you're going that way? Good, I'm going this way. Okay, okay. You know, so we know when you're in a team environment and, and guys feel that love, they play better. That buzzer means it is time for make or miss. Okay. Right. Make goals. Boris Diaw told GQ he wants to go to space, maybe even Mars. Zach, do you share Boris Diaw's desire for space travel? Yeah, Earth is over. We got it. It's time. It's time for Mars. Let's do it. That's the old model. Let's you want the it. new model? Oh look, see, look, we're there. There we go. He kind of looked like a Martian. Maybe he would be oh. up there. Oh. oh. 
Oh, they better, I say that in my They, bad. Be, my they bad, better boys. have a cappuccino machine in space. That's all I got to know for Boris. Miss Friendship. Evan Fournier trolled his fellow countryman Rudy Gobert with this Instagram picture, photoshopping himself in the crowd while Gobert is getting dunked on. Byron, is this messed up to post about your friend? That's cold blooded. That's supposed to be your boy, and you post. This, him get dunked on, I mean, that, that's good. cold blooded. I like, I like it. I like, I like Rudy, it. Rudy takes pride in getting dunked on. Rudy should knock him out when he sees. I mean, I like to post photoshops about Zach, so I, I get that. Make Flashback Friday. We found this oh. old school footage yeah. of Byron taking batting practice with Daryl Strawberry 20 years ago. Look at that. That's my boy Eric Davis, too. Oh, I thought that was gone. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for the World Series oh. tonight, Byron? You can just step in and play there. Hey, I. I got, I got skills. Wild. Not one yeah. skill. in that whole reel, not one swing oh, and a miss. No. Well, Zach, not I got skills. We cut. No, 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 no. We, Zach, <laughs> Zach, okay, all right. Rachel, I got. I had skills in baseball back I in the day. I can see that. You and Tracy, this whole show could be a baseball. We could have a great softball team.